Welcome to A-Frame Lesson 2.1. In this video series of Lesson 2, we're going to start using JavaScript to interact with A-Frame. In this particular video, we're going to create a component, modify it, and then ultimately add it to the scene. So let's get to it. So let's see what we have. Uh, this is essentially the basic template that you get from I uh, A-frame I-O, minus the cylinder, the plane, uh, the box, and the sphere. Because we're going to be using JavaScript to create uh, A-frame components and then manipulate them, we need to write our JavaScript somewhere. So using Replit, uh, they put, give us a file called script.js. Right now it's empty. But we want to connect this file to our web page. So we're going to use script source. Uh, to make that connection, uh, to bring in that code from that file onto this web page. Now, I think this will be a nice time to kind of have a little disclaimer about the videos as we go forward. Uh, there is an assumption that you are familiar with programming, specifically JavaScript, and its application to general web development. Uh, I'm going to try to explain things as we go, but again, so that this doesn't become a JavaScript course, JavaScript video, I'll make some assumptions about the things that I write. Again, if there is any questions, I definitely suggest, you know, you could always Google them uh, and learn more about the particular pieces of code that I'm going to uh, introduce. So like I said, line four uh, will connect this file to our HTML. Now, because we want something to fire off, when the page loads, we're going to write window.onload. And what onload is looking for is some kind of a function. So let's give it that function. Now, this is what's called an anonymous function. Uh, it's simply going to be executed when the page loads. You can't explicitly call this function somewhere else. Now, let me just prove it to you that this uh, function, the code that we write in here, is being fired off when the page loads, I'm just going to do a simple alert, nothing special. And there you go. You can see that there's an alert that pops up with the number of one. What this lets us know is that whatever I write here, whatever we write here, will be executed when the page loads. So what's the whole purpose here? We want to use JavaScript to start creating a frame. So let's create a variable called box and let's use our document. Now document is part of the DOM object uh, and there's a lot of things available to us uh, through the document. One thing that it lets us do is to create elements and if you recall um, during the first video series you know we may mention that A-frame is a web-based technology that these follow the same syntax as HTML. So these are called elements. So that's what we're going to use here. We're going to use create element, not element. And what we want to do is we want to create a box. Now, just as a side note, um, this create element has nothing to do with a frame. This is just JavaScript and the document object model with HTML. We could have, if we wanted to, if you're familiar with web development, we could create a paragraph, we can create an H1, uh, we can create a div, we can create an image. You could pretty much create anything you want using the create element. Again, that was just a side note. For our purposes, though, we're going to be creating A-frame components, which are HTML elements. Now, the next thing we have to be able to do, now that we've created the element, we want to be able to somehow put that element in our scene which means we need to have access to the scene. So let's create another variable to represent our scene. So I'm going to use document again, very powerful object, has a lot of things available to us. And what we're going to use is the query selector. Now, what does the query selector allow us to do? It allows us to grab something from our web page using uh, CSS selector type syntax. Again, if you're not familiar with web development, if this really is your first exposure to HTML and JavaScript and CSS, then just think of it like this. This is going to allow us to grab this particular element. So the query selector is going to grab us the scene. And now what we can do with this scene 
is that we can append to it the box. And it's that simple. So let's go ahead and run it and let's see what happens. All right, so at first glance, you might say, well, nothing happened. We don't see anything. Uh, the screen is still blue. Again, it's blue because of the background. But if you recall, all we did was create the box and we added it, we added it to the scene. And if you remember from a previous lesson, most components have a default position that's the same of our, as ours. So if I move back in my world, there's the box. And just to prove to you that it is a box, uh, I'm going to rotate around a little bit uh, and just show you. I mean, this is a A-frame box like you would have created by hand. All right, so, okay, we created the box. Let's do something more with the box. So I'm going to go down here and, you know, just for the sake of clarity, I'm going to switch this around. And I typically do this uh, in our functions that I'll create a variable for the scene first because that's the most important thing. And then I worry about creating anything else uh, that I want in the world. <coughs> so position is an attribute. So through the box, we can do a set attribute. Now, I want to remind you, like I did with the create element, this set attribute is not part of A-frame. This set attribute is a JavaScript function that's attached to our object, uh, document object model, which is just part of regular web development. So again, you can use this set attribute with just any old element, a paragraph, a div. Again, I just want to keep reminding that because, again, A-Frame is a web-based technology, so it does borrow a lot of things from traditional web development. So let's modify the position. So we're going to specify the attribute, which is position, and then we have to specify a value. Again, you can see here it's kind of giving us a little indication as to what it wants. Now, it'd be nice if we can do this, but that is not how the set attribute works. Uh, for some properties, it does work that way, uh, but not for the position. If you recall, position is X, Y, and Z. So we're going to have to use another uh, web development technology, a uh, JavaScript technology called JSON. And what is a JSON? A JSON essentially is a dictionary uh, where you can specify certain keys and their value. So if you recall, we just mentioned that the three zeros were X, Y, and Z. So I could do this. I could say X colon zero comma Y colon, we'll raise it up a little bit, comma, and then a Z colon, say negative, I will say negative five. All right? So that way when we first you know, enter our world, the box should be right in front of us. And there it is. And again, just to go from the side, you can see it is a 3D box. <coughs> so the set attribute lets us access any attribute of the particular element. So let's play with another one. Let's say set attribute. And let's play around with the rotation, because the rotation is somewhat similar to the position where it also takes an X, Y, and Z. Uh, so let's go ahead and create our JSON again. Uh, we'll say zero rotation in the X. And let's just rotate it a little bit in the Y. Uh, let's say 45 degrees. And then a Z of zero. And then, so you can see that the box is at position 0, 1, negative 5. It has a rotation of 0, 45, and 0. Again, you can modify every attribute about this element. Uh, let's take care, let's do one more, uh, which is some, one that we commonly use. So we'll say attribute, attribute. <laughs> let's say color, and let's simply specify a color. So this is an example of one where you could actually just write the word. It does not, doesn't require a JSON because, again, it's just the word for the color constant. And there it is. Uh, let's go ahead and create another object just for the sake of having something else in the world uh, and to practice this. So let's say a sphere. And let's say, actually, you know what? Why don't I just copy everything? <laughs> Might be a lot easier than typing it from scratch. 
let's do a sphere and let's put the sphere slightly to the left of the box. Uh, obviously, we're gonna have to call this something else. So let's call it sphere. A little copy and paste, replace all these things. And uh, quite honestly, with the sphere, I'm not gonna do a rotation, that's a little silly. Uh, but maybe we could modify the radius. So let's make the radius two. So it's a little bit bigger than the standard uh, sphere. And let's make the sphere a yellow. And then let's add the sphere to our scene. All right, so there is our sphere. I'm trying to see, oh, you know why? It's a copy and paste. I didn't actually add the box anymore. So let's put the box back up here. And we'll notice that the box is right in there. So let's move the box over to the right a little bit. Let's say two. And that way we have the box and the sphere. And I'm gonna go through the world a little bit. You know, do a little rotation. Uh, looks like the sphere because it's so big, it's still in the way. But you can see there, box is on the other side. And again, at this point, you might be thinking, wow, that's a lot of code just to create a sphere in a box. Uh, along with this video, I'm going to show you some examples because really what the benefit comes from when actually start using a for loop to dynamically create a lot of these boxes. Um, and you can have precise positioning with these boxes because, again, through programming, you can specify the numbers exactly. All right, so let's go back to our presentation. And let's review what we've done. So in this video, uh, we've introduced the notion of using JavaScript with A-Frame. Uh, we explored how to create a component, uh, how to modify various attributes of that component, and then ultimately how to add it to the scene. So hopefully you're excited to be able to dynamically create a lot of A-Frame components to your virtual world. Enjoy.